I have also been working on the Casey Jones locomotive. Mechanically speaking, this thing runs pretty good. Um, at least by my standards, you know. I, I don't necessarily need this to do a decent crawl because, you know, in real life this engine was famous for speeding excessively with mail trains, so, you know, it doing a crawl is a nice a nice thing to have, but, you know, at the same time on this one it's not a deal breaker. Um, the thing you may be asking, though, is like, um, where's the rest of it and why are there all the screws in the tender? And uh, let me show you. So basically, I've had this locomotive apart, at least the cosmetic components of it, for painting purposes. So, um, for example, the smoke box front on this, um, originally the tabs on the inside were broken off and um, I, t I think repaired with wood glue by the previous owner and um, it was kind of a mess so I had to fully cut it off and I sanded the back side of the smoke box down some with this uh, emery board and just sort of did that until it was reasonably uh, flush with the uh, smoke box front so I can just PVA glue this back in um, like, you know, like this um, and uh, yeah, and also I've just been uh, cleaning off all of the dust and dirt that's been on this locomotive boiler so that I can paint it up. A uh, real quick side tangent rant thing. Uh, something that I've been like infuriated by when trying to fix up old model trains is people that use wood glue, specifically wood glue, specifically only on the smoke box front of locomotive boilers because then it dries like this and it's very difficult to get off. So, with the Casey Jones locomotive, um, I bought this locomotive specifically because um, this particular period of locomotive style I find to be really, like, <sighs> like they're just my favorite. Um, you know, you know stuff like this, you know, where they're not quite Wild Westy, and uh, you know they've got like the same sort of aesthetics of like you know an 1860s sort of locomotive, but they're toned down a little bit more, and they're a little bit more. Um, a little bit more uh, tame, I think, is the word. Like, uh, the those sort of 1890s locomotives are sort of the beautiful um, cross between, you know, the styling and aesthetic of this sort of locomotive. But their locomotives at that point in time were just starting to get closer to being this sort of size. Like, a locomotive of this sort of period is about the same height as a um, more modern locomotive, except for the tender, of course but it's only about the same length as a much older locomotive, and that's so that they can still fit on old-style turntables like that one over there, but they could get more speed and power out of the thing. So basically, they're, they're operating on similar infrastructure to 1860s stuff, but they're wanting to go bigger and faster and so on. Although that's just technical stuff, and that's, that's, that's just me saying that I, I think they're really, really pretty. And um, basically, I want to make this... E I want to emphasize the fact that this this model train, even though it is actually a very simple plastic model, it's um, it's it's still it's still pretty, even though it is just molded in black. In fact, I don't think there's any other paint on this except for the little Illinois Central Railroad logo. Now, originally, I was thinking of making the uh, Casey Jones 460 into a Norfolk and Western Railway U class. Uh, to go with my Norfolk Western Railway uh, C class over there, which also needs the Norfolk Western logos and so on. But when I found this, and when I saw that the, um, well, the, uh, you know, the road name and you know the numbers on the on the tender weren't rubbed off like on a lot of other Casey Jones HO models, and just. I don't know, just something about the idea of this being Casey Jones's locomotive really started to, you know, rub off on me, and then I, I couldn't bring myself to, you know, paint it in Norfolk Western Railway colors, even though it would have looked about the same. It's just something about, you know, being able to say, oh yeah, this is Casey Jones, you know, and the fact that, like, five people know who that is, it, it, I don't know, it's just kind of neat. And so because of that, I'm going to leave the numbers and such alone when I paint this time, unless I severely mess up, in which I will um, pretend like uh, I wasn't attached to the numbers anyways. And, uh, yeah, so... Now, one issue with my Casey Jones is that um, I bought this used, and the cab has this little notch taken out of it. I'm thinking that the previous owner kind of must have dropped it or something. And 
Since it's got that lip around it and I can't exactly replicate that, what I was thinking of doing was making this look intentional by making an absolutely identical notch on the other side of the cab to make it look like it's supposed to be there. Um, now that's kind of a weird feature, but at the same time, aesthetically, I think it kind of matches with the, um, you know, the sort of train from Back to the Future 3 sort of look, you know, where there's like notches and such, and little fins and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, that sounds weird out of context, but like, you know, at, this is supposed to be like, you know, a demon speedster 1890s mail train locomotive, you know, and I think that, you know, just that weird cab shape just kind of helps with that, like, visual language, if that makes any sense. Because, like, um, long pointy bits coming off of characters sort of suggest, like, you know, uh, the sleek villain type. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just saying words. Oh yeah, and um, I'm also going to uh, paint the wheels in the same shade of black as the rest of it because it bothers me that they're slightly gray. And um, I'm going to also probably paint the spokes white. I know that's a Baldwin feature specifically, but like, it looks cool. <laughs> so like, I'm going to do that. Um, I might do that on the pilot bogey too. And um, yeah. Oh, one last thing. And this is the part that I'm going to start painting first. Uh, this is a brass cow catcher. I don't believe it's the original one that came with the Casey Jones. It might have been, or it might have been like an upgrade part that came later, because in looking at pictures of other H.O. Casey Jones locomotives, um, the cow catcher didn't look like this. And so I'm thinking the previous owner um, just had this brass cow catcher in their bits box and then just stuck it on. And it looks very nice, and um, it's a very well-made piece. There was a little bit of flash left on it, but you know, it cleaned up nicely. I gave this a uh, good roughing up all, all around just to get some of the tarnish off it before I paint and to make sure that the uh, paint sticks on nicely, but this is the part that I'm going to paint first because it's the part that's going to be hardest for me to accidentally mess up. So I'm just going to get into that now. So this thing, this thing right here, was not intended for model train use at all, but it is probably the best $10 I've ever spent on anything at an uh, art store. This uh, is a little helping hand thing, and it just, you know, it holds on to parts. It is a bit tight, so I don't like to use it with plastic parts, but on brass stuff, it holds the thing just right. And, um, basically what I'm just going to do is go real gentle at first and just get a, a base coat on this. Probably a pretty thin coat because, um, you know, it makes sense too. This brush is very stiff, actually. Hang on. But yeah, we're just going to give this a uh, good coat of black. This brush is really not being a brush right now, but we're going to ignore that. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't look great right now, but the uh, coats are going on pretty nicely, and it's... It's a start. Normally, um, brass doesn't actually stick that well to paint, so that's why on a lot of, you know, particularly on you know steam engines, for example, you know a lot of the brass parts aren't painted at all. Or uh, also, if you see model trains on eBay that are brass, oftentimes the paint is uh, just sort of rubbed off just from handling it. Now, this is um, probably the only brass piece on this locomotive that I will be painting, just because you know the rest of it is just like handrails and such that would you know. I like to keep in brass, but, you know, the cow catcher is most likely would have been wood in real life on this engine. Or I'd like to imagine. So, you know, it makes sense to paint it, especially, you know, brush painting, because the full-size thing would be uh, brush painted. I'm aware I could I could have sprayed this piece, but at the same time, I don't know, I'm, I'm very bad at rattle cans, especially because the uh, rattle cans that I use tend to be kind of thick, and, uh... They don't really like to cooperate with me. So, um, yeah, just because this cow catcher is a very finely detailed little you know, metal casting, so I don't want to make it, you know, look... You know, I wouldn't say that this is perfect or anything, but already this is starting to sort of have that wood uh, pilot beam kind of feel. I think it's mostly to do with the fact that the uh, the brush strokes kind of create wood grain unintentionally. And, uh, 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure somebody out there watching this is a, a big brass train model railroader. And um, I think that's cool, but, you know, I just feel like, you know, they'd s scream at me pretty loud for uh, taking a brass piece and, you know, painting it. Because that's something I've always thought was kind of strange personally. And I don't want to be like, you know, oh, if you do this, you're bad or whatever. Because this, this model trains, nobody really, nobody should really, you know, care that much, if that makes any sense. But, like, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of very beautiful brass model trains out there where they've not really ever been painted. And I can understand part of the appeal of that. Part of the novelty is that, you know, it's a model train that's made of brass and, you know, it looks brass. But another part of me is kind of confused because these models are usually rivet counter specific uh, models of locomotives. And uh, you know, you'd think that if they were making them so specialized, you know, that they would, you know, that, you know, part of the appeal there would be that it's painted just like the real one that it's based on. And a lot of them are, but some of them aren't. And it, I don't know, I can't get my head around it personally, uh, nor why they're so expensive. But, um, yeah, this brass cow catcher is uh, starting to look the part. Wait, the camera's not doing a good job of focusing on it, but, uh, yeah, that's the first coat done. It's a little thick at a few places, but uh, once it dries and I put some more water around this, it should probably look okay. There's a few spots also around the back side of the cow catcher that I'll probably get to with some thinner paint and a few more coats. But, yeah. I think it actually uh, looks the part of a wooden cow catcher pretty well, especially because the uh, the brush streaks just down each of the uh, little um, struts here do kind of make it look wooden, although there are some blobs of paint that I would like to remove. Um, but that will come later. I also, um, one of the flag holders is broken on this one, so I removed the other one, so I'll see about making some replacement ones using some bits of uh, wire, so we can actually put a flag on each side. Yep, so I've just gone over it with a little bit more of the uh, black paint, although I just now realized on camera that I missed a spot. Um, right about there. I'm just kind of going in thin coats with lots of water and just making sure that I cover everything without making too many marks and so on. Um, yeah. Basically, I'm just going to let this dry for now. I'm kind of making more of a mess of it as I'm touching it, so I should probably stop touching it for now. The next thing I'm going to probably do is paint the, ins the inside of these cab windows. Now, I'm going to make sure that the Illinois Central Railroad logo here um, is masked off, because I want to keep the black panels on this, but I want the rest of the cab to be sort of a maroon color. And um, I also might um, see about making that incision into the side of the cab. Okay, so before I start painting this cab, I decided that I was going to cut out that little bit on the opposite side of the cab and make it look like uh, the chunk that was missing on the other side was intentional by sort of mirroring it and straightening it out. It looks a little bit strange, I will admit, but from the side, you know, and if you look at a lot of cabs of other steam locomotives, it, you, know, it's, it, you can kind of see where that would sort of make sense. And also, it looks kind of cool. Now, just because I'm normally pretty careful with my paints, but I'm I'm clumsy with a, you know just in general, I've covered up the um, Illinois Central Railroad transfers on both sides, and I'm going to also use the little ridge around the cab as a guide for when I'm painting. This mix that I've got right now is actually going to be a um, sort of an off-white brown, sort of almost ivory-looking uh, material that's going to be going around the cab windows. Now basically, um, you know, this is just sort of to give the um, cab windows a little bit more of a, a pop to them. I'm doing these first so that if I ended up getting more of it on the uh, sides of the cab, it's okay because I'm doing that, uh, the, the uh, cab paneling color next, so it will just sort of cover this up. And um, yeah, this is looking about right so far. Yep, that's about the color that I was looking for. It's basically just an, a very slightly off-white sort of color. Yeah, that way it'll contrast a lot better with the dark of the rest of the locomotive. I didn't film the first window I did because this one requires a very steady hand, but you know, with 
the knowledge that all the um, splash on the outside will be uh, covered up by the next layer of paint, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just going to go around and do the uh, trim on the other cab windows, including the ones on the back. And, um, yeah, I we'll probably won't film it again just because it's very uh, involved process, but, yeah. Okay, so I haven't cleaned up the edges yet, but I still feel like this just this very slight bit of paint really improves the whole look of the engine because you know one of the things that I love about Rio Rossi engines and a lot of other modelers take advantage of is that when they come out of the factory you know like this one for example there is no paint on it it's just number transfers but that's kind of inviting you the modeler to go in and you know add your own little bits of paint and you know already it's starting to look that much better just a Ignore the bits like this, this, and this where I haven't cleaned it up yet. I'll do that on the next layer of paint, I swear. Alright, so here we have the other side. Again, I'm going to be cleaning up the uh, edges around these windows. But it's just... Uh, I think it's just kind of incredible how that little extra bit of paint, you know, just that tiniest little rim around those windows makes the thing just look that much more detailed. I'm going to do the front windows around the cab and... Um, I'll see about doing the, the doors. I'm not sure what color I want to do the doors in, but, yeah. Also, something I find kind of funny is that the shape of the back of this cab is almost like a uh, EMD Jeep or a uh, Alco Century, but if you described what one was to a 19th century person. You know, like, you know, that sort of shape of cab, and then you, you know... That's actually a kit bashing project for another day, a, a steampunk uh, GP series, but uh, we'll get back to this. I just said the word steampunk out loud. I might be getting ahead of myself here, but I did just trim out the running boards and the domes and uh Oh, I, I like how this is coming along. And uh, I couldn't help myself, and I just barely skated the edges of the tender with the uh, white pinstriping, and uh, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm liking this. Oh, 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 yeah, this is all coming together. So, here we are. This isn't totally complete. And there are some areas that I do want to touch up a little bit. But I think overall, this looks the way I want it to. Later on, I may add things like maybe some paint around the uh, number board there, and maybe some more stripes here, and uh, a little more lining around the boiler maybe. But for the time being, I really am quite happy with the improvements I've been able to make on the little Casey Jones. And before I end the video, I've just decided to give it a, a period uh, passenger car to pull, and uh, we'll just send it around with the uh, little Pullman Special.
because you know I've got that locomotive out and I've got this painted up I figured you know you know you might as well just run both of them together And then now we can continue. 